peeps and peepettes, welcome back to another episode of Warp Jester Does Retro Games. We are back with Diablo 2 once again. Uh, where we left left off, we were kind of going through the rambling caves. These are the caves, I'm the rambling. <laughs> um, but I left off before we stepped down to the next level here. Uh, I haven't checked my inventory, I have to notice that we picked up a, a charm here. And I happen to have a, uh, a scroll of identification. So I went ahead and identified it. Now the problem is, is that uh, come to find out that it was a great charm. Well, uh, better than nothing charm. Oh, man, my cursor's not working. There we go. Uh, but it's a level nine charm, <laughs> so I can't do anything with the dang thing. I only had one, one uh, uh, scroll of identify. It was either do the charm or do the hat. The hat I could probably use now, knowing my luck. And the charm, I got away a little while. So charm is the things you keep in your inventory and gives you a bonus and say plus eight life there. Not a big deal, but you know, better than nothing. And my pappy will always say, it's better than a poking out of the sharp stick. Not really sure how I feel about that one anyway. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go ahead and dive down here to the second level and quiz. I believe this is a small little cave. So we'll go ahead and butch through it and kill everything. Rah. Kill them all, let God sort them out. Uh, so, hey, how you doing? Welcome back. Long time no see. Hey, they didn't. Um, yeah, so nothing looks same going on. I don't, like I, said, I, don't try, I don't try to talk about current events, at least current current events, because, you know, these episodes are usually recorded back to back a couple at a time, and then weeks out before they actually get posted so i try to keep uh time on a little agnostic uh, whenever possible so general general topics are usually my best bush subject um but one thing that actually has been in the news for a while and i feel uh, somewhat safe to talk about is um uh the topics of some of the new gaming stuff came out. we had uh, e3 not too long ago big gaming expo and uh, got to see what was going on there hey jess i like it um and some of the things are coming out of it were interesting. There's some game content, talk, and conversation. Um, I, I will, I will upfront admit that I wasn't really paying it real close attention uh, to all the little nitty gritty details going on around there. Uh, but I did, I did catch a lot of the highlights and interesting stuff. And of course, uh, uh, Microsoft's uh, HoloLens was a big talk topic, and they had a nice little demo showing off the what you could see, like in Minecraft, and that was really neat. Cause they give you the you know through the magic of of technology, they can show you what it would look like from the camera's point of view, so to speak. Uh, and you know, really and honestly, if if you can do what they showed, uh, damn, I'm impressed. The problem is that from all the uh, all the reports I've heard about. The HoloLens is not so much the the hoopty bitch and wow that they actually were showing off there. Uh, one of the big things is that the current iterations of the um, of the HoloLens, apparently the viewing field for it is something the equivalent of a looking through a uh, a post uh, <laughs> a, a letter uh, um, uh, letter gap and a postal gap. Um, so you, you get a very kind of narrow band to actually see, see out of, and that makes me a little sad, because apparently the, the first iteration they had, when it was still a tethered thing, it had a, a, a bigger viewing area, now it's a little, little slit of a, uh, you know, letterbox type slit, and, uh, yeah, I just, there, there's been talk and rumor that that's just the way it's going to be, due to limitation of technology, I, I, I one part God I hope not and I one part holy sweet Jesus you know you can't honestly tell me that you guys really thought that, that was a good idea to run with that I mean if, if, if your technology is still that limited uh, you may want to wait a little bit longer because that's that's bad news all around right there ooh that's a tidy let's get, get her down um, yes I mean I just I, I, I really like the idea of woo 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 I really like the idea of um, augmented reality. 
I, I really see kind of the the benefit of augmented reality versus uh, virtual reality. There's, it, the, the, there is no, oh, this one's better than that one. That doesn't exist in my mind. It's just a matter of where the practical applications are and, and basically how, what am I going to utilize more in my environment kind of a thing. Uh, augmented reality has more versatility. It has a potential to do a lot more for me personally in that you can do a lot of cool gaming in, in theory, ooh, man, I'm going to get toasted here. In theory, uh, with augmented reality, you have the ability to basically, well, okay, let me, let me back up here first. Just to, just in case there's somebody watching that for some reason uh, hasn't heard the details about augmented reality versus virtual reality. So virtual reality is like the Oculus Rift and, and things of that nature. So these are things that cover your face, completely block your vision, and feed you a basically a, a screen in front of you. Um, you're not going to get to walk around with these things because you, you trip and kill yourself. Vir or augmented reality uh, is, think of the idea of, of an overlay. So you're wearing glasses or a shield or whatever so you can see the real world, but then you overlay digital information. It's kind of the same concept like a heads-up display um, on fighter planes or Google Glass, sort of. You got that little uh, display in the corner. Um, that's the kind of concept of it. Um, a little more immersive and can have a little more detail to it. So that's why I say, uh, you know, can be something beneficial or a little more flexible. Um, especially when you have the idea of saying, if you have augmented reality that's uh, sensitive or aware of your environment. So say, for example, you're walking around your living room and it can work with your environment. So it says, okay, you've got you know a standing lamp in the corner here, a couch over here, a coffee table there, and then it can use some algorithms and architecture built into the system to say, I'm going to go ahead and overlay these objects with themed items for the game you're playing. So now all of a sudden you're in a jungle and that lamp is you know part of a tree that's growing up and vines coming out of it and the coffee table is a log things like that that way you can kind of freely comfortably run around uh you know your your augmented environment without worrying about tripping over something and killing yourself in the process so think, think about that for a moment there is actually augmenting your world in that regard but even more so over uh augmented reality just the, the whole concept of augmented reality really intrigues me things like especially you know for what i think you know concepts like Google Glass really should have been is this idea of saying, hey, I'm going to be able to um, overlay information when I'm out in the world. So Google Glass, to give you an example, uh, having the ability to say, I'm walking down the street and to see those navigation directions overlaid, seeing the Google Maps street view with the, the, the road names pasted onto the road. Um, be able to see points of fact or immediate translations. These are the things that people have talked about. Those are the kind of things that intrigue me. So I really like the idea of... I oh, poop. I really like the idea of augmented reality and, and the potential capacity it has. And it's something I really do look forward to because, again, uh, that is just that is something that is going to be a whole lot of hell yes please <laughs> in my life. Um... So there's there's definitely that to look forward to, uh, so that that that's kind of the the one standout thing at the E3 event that I would I would think would kind of be the the woo -woo <laughs> to keep an eye on. Um, beyond that, I mean, in, in the gaming world, I I hate to say it, but I just I have not seen uh, anything that's really caught my eye. I I do keep an eye out, uh, just you know to see. What's going on? Some of the gaming forums, uh, 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 votable. Actually, uh, this is the thing I was bringing up is votable. Vo votable is a site you should definitely go to. It's a great site, great people. Um, it really is. I can't really describe it all that well. It's not really a Facebook. It's better than that for gaming. It's not really a. It, it's not a forum site or a blog site or something like that. It's a community. It's a well done community. So I, I give Votable a lot of props. Um, definitely something you should definitely check out if you're into gaming, or movies, or TV, or many other things for that matter. Um, but uh, yeah, I just I haven't seen anything that's really stood out to me. I, maybe I'm missing the boat. I don't know. If I if I am, tell me in the comments below, and then I'll I'll take a look so I know what the hell I'm talking about. But um, 
So, you know, gaming-wise, I haven't seen a lot of stuff come up. Uh, Technology-wise, I, I would say right now, probably the biggest thing I'm looking forward to, as, as crazy as this may sound, is actually Windows 10. Um, I've had a chance to play with some of the uh, preview copies of Windows 10, try it out on, on a second PC I had, and I, I got one of the earliest, uh, earliest public releases of Windows 10, uh, months and months and months ago, and yeah, I, I I've done early early access release of Windows operating systems in the past, and and you can uh, many many of the times I can see where they're going with it, and there's a lot of potential there. But you know, it's one of those. Please bear in mind, this is in beta, or this is an alpha. You know, there are going to be bugs there, and it really feels like that. Windows 10, from the earliest releases they did for uh, kind of testing and preview, it it uh, it worked really well. Uh, to be quite honest, it actually was pretty polished as it is, and um, I really think they've done a really good job with uh, kind of finding that happy medium, if you will, in terms of people running on uh, uh, people running on seven versus people running on eight, and so on. Um, they've really done a good job with finding the right balance for the interface. Uh, I'll, I'll be the first one to say that uh, um, when it comes to uh, interface, I understand what they were trying to do with Windows 8, but to, to put it politely, it was a colossal cluster fairy, what they ended up doing. And I'm just, I'm just going to be mean and just be up front and say, this is all Bomber's damn fault. <laughs> I, I'm i not part of Microsoft. I don't work for Microsoft. I don't know the inner workings of what happened, the decisions were made, and who actually, you know, were responsible for what. So, realistically, I can't, you know, I'm not saying it's Bomber's fault because I know for a fact that Bomber's one. I don't. But he was at the helm, and I think in general, just follow the, the paths that Microsoft's tried to take under his, um, uh, uh, under his watch, uh, I'm just gonna go with the he was head of Microsoft, and so all the mistakes are his ultimately. So, yeah, I, it again, I, I can see I saw where Windows 8 was going. They failed. They they tried to do this kind of departure from the traditional interface to really take advantage of that uh, that wonderful new touch environment that everybody is going to, and they really. They really did it at the abandonment of people still using a mouse and keyboard. Um, that said, I think they corrected it satisfactorily or sufficiently uh, by whoa. Um, I think I, th I think they fixed it really well with eight point one. I really do. I know again, everybody's gonna have a different opinion about it, but I, I'm I'm a realistic person when it comes to. Uh, when it comes to, I'm not people. I'm not. I'm not one of the people that's hung up on this seemingly asinine personality of saying, "Oh my gosh, different! It must be horrible." And I think that's a lot, a, a big, big portion of what, uh, um, what a lot of the, the negativity towards Windows Windows 8 originally was was the fact that it was a big departure. And again, I'm not. I'm not defending Windows 8 by any stretch of imagination, as I've already stated. But it was a big departure from the traditional Windows interface that we are all familiar with. And as a result, people had kind of a, a, a preconceived notion of, oh, it must be bad because it's different. And I, I tend to get a little frustrated with people like, like that because ultimately all you're doing is you're, you're, you're putting a negative tone for people who haven't even dealt with it yet. So that, that kind of took a bad precedence. And you're kind of you're basically kind of screwing yourself here, not giving yourself a chance, so you don't know how it's going to be. I I was open minded. I help. I tried eight out, regardless of what people said. And instead of complaining about the UI being crap because it's different, I went ahead and tried to use it, tried to utilize it, and then tried to find the, the plus and minuses of it. And that's the critical thing right there. Is I actually tried to have an open mind to see, okay, well let's let's try to find the good parts of it and the bad parts of it and analyze them. It's it's, it's not one of those. You know, trying to find the diamond, the diamond in the poo pile. It generally was instead of going off a preconceived notion, let's actually, honestly and candidly evaluate. If there's something that does frustrate me, why? 
and, and analyze it. And then, well, what does it, what, what does it do that Windows 7 doesn't do? Is it better? Is it worse? And so on. And, you know, ultimately what came away from that was, like I said, um, Windows 8 kind of not so much with the bueno, but Windows 8 1 works just fine. Anybody who's still using Windows 8, by the way, um, you will do yourself a big, big favor if you go ahead and um, learn Windows shortcuts. And Windows shortcuts for 8.1 are, for the most part, all the same as Windows shortcuts for uh, Windows 7. Um, so if you know little, let me just, little things, like, hey, if I hit uh, you know, the Windows key in E, it'll bring up an Explorer window for me so I can you know, get my different files and drives. Um, or, you know, Windows R for run, Windows N for OneNote, etc. If, if you learn those shortcuts, that makes it a lot easier. The other thing that people, I don't know why, just don't seem to ever quite catch is when you hit the start button on Windows 8 or 8.1, you get that big giant full screen tile menu. Um, that is every bit as functional and functional and, and and useful as uh as the windows 7 uh start menu if not more the best thing about it is you hit the start button you bring up the tile menu and then you just start typing and it will always find what you need every time the tile menu gives you a lot more flexibility and freedom to, to adjust things and again it's my opinion you know don't don't let's not play let's not play the pooping game here if you have a different opinion, that's totally cool. And I respect that. Um, it's just that, that, that that's kind of how I've, I've kind of walked away from it is, is it does certainly have its benefits and it's functional. Now, that said, put all that aside for a moment here and realize that with Windows 10, Windows 10 completely revamped the interface again and, and really did what I would consider the right thing when it comes to... Um, uh, the interface it still maintains this metro tile which you can adjust the size of which is great but it also tends to um find a good blending so people from windows 7 are going to walk into windows 10 and be comfortable enough to navigate it for the little differences that there may be um and feel comfortable using it so that that's a great thing and same with people with windows 8 when the people with windows 8 are in fact going to uh, uh, like how Windows 10 looks and feels. It does feel like a, a good evolutionary step from one to the other, so to speak. So uh, definitely recommend checking it out and uh, seeing if it's uh, uh, something you want to look into. And if you already have Windows 7 or Windows 8, it is a free upgrade from Microsoft. So, I mean, it really is a no-brainer. I definitely recommend doing it. Hands down, bar none, yakety schmackety, so to speak. So, uh, that that that's my two bits on it. Let's see, a little bit less damage on the max here, but it does do cold damage, which I really like. I really like cold damage because cold damage makes mobs slow down. And that said, this hunter's bow does have slots. If I find any gems, and eh, you know, I'm never gonna get around to it. Screw it. <laughs> um. Yeah, so I mean, like Windows 10, I'm looking forward to. Um, yeah, I'm never going to use this damn thing, so screw it. And I don't need this one because it's the worst one, right? Yeah, okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Get rid of that. You, oh, you already drew a mystery potion. You should be done here. So, that's my take on it, is my opinion. Uh, again, if you have a. A different view on things. Uh, I, I I certainly welcome and 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 be curious to know what you think about Windows 10. So give me give me a quick little little tidbit about it and uh, yeah, let me know. I'd love to have a conversation. I'm I'm am a I'm a I'm a geek at heart. I do IT for a living. I I do a lot of tech tinkering as a hobby. Uh, so whoo whoo um. So I do like uh, to have a conversation about it now and then. So uh, yeah, fun stuff. Ooh, faster hit recovery. Whoop de do. Faster recovery. Whoop de do. Kind of tempted to get a pair of gloves just because. And then 39% natural and enhanced defense. That basically means the defense, as you can see, is a five of the blue number. 
is it's now up to five, so that was what really sucked before. Hmm. Maybe I'll wait. Who knows? Who knows? But uh yes, technology wise that's that's yeah. Nothing really exciting really popping out at me right now. Um not anything else exciting. Uh I would say Again, the game's probably really not seeing anything new and interesting, but uh, I wouldn't be all surprised if we have some big things coming up uh, or coming out pretty soon here that I might be interested in. I know there's a lot of games out there I've looked at and gone, yeah, you know what, I could definitely do that. It's just, again, it's a matter of, of, of time and money. Um, you know, I, I have a good portion of my uh, my free time here and by free time, I mean the time I'm actually allocating towards things from the computer is is split between doing the editing and uh, uh, recording and all that, as well as other things. But of that, when I'm actually gonna sit down and play, first of all, I, I, right off the bat, I've, I've got my Cherry Bomb uh, Minecraft series, Cherry Bomb server series I'm doing, and then I'm also gonna be starting up. Uh, a series on the Sparkler server, which is another server that we spooled up just recently. I like to do some work there as well. And then I'm also con seriously considering uh, uh, actually joining the uh, Grumpy Owls group uh, for their uh, soon to be coming up uh, 1.9 vanilla server release. Um, I, 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 I'm not a big vanilla person person per se i really appreciate vanilla i really really do i love playing with vanilla because i after you play with modern minecraft for a little while you really get kind of comfortable with um okay do here you really get you, you get comfortable with uh, uh the conveniences of modded and because of that you actually kind of a little more respect, if you will, for vanilla. You can kind of enjoy, uh, enjoy what the limit, the, the natural limitations of vanilla to play with. And so there's, there's definitely that. I, I, I like that. Um, my big concern is I really want to play with them more than anything, just because of the, um, of the people on the Grumpy Owl server. I watch a lot of their videos. Um, I actually scouted uh, two of them early on before they had joined the Grumpy Owl server, but they ended up going, uh, going that direction, which is wonderful, because it's, it's a great server, I'm glad they got a good group to be with. But this, this is one of those server environments where they, they're all YouTubers, and there's kind of a, there was a stated expectation about how much content comes out of there. And that worries me, because I really do want to be a part of it, but I don't, I don't know that I can commit to having that reliable, steady content uh, coming out, and that's that's about the the long and short of it. I, again, great people. I love everything about it. I have no, absolutely no problem with some of these groups that have like standards on. Well, you have to be on X amount of time, or you have to uh, uh, bring out, you know, be able to upload content uh, at a minimum of X per day, week, month, whatever. Um, but uh, ultimately, though, the the big issue that ends up coming out of it. Is if I can't keep up with it, then what happens? You know, I, I want to put some time and investment into projects and recording and whatnot to find out that I can no longer play in the server because I was, you know, dead to the world for a while, or I just I just can't keep up with, uh, you know, X amount of content. So that's that that's a that's kind of a, a bum bum side of it. Uh, will that be a big deal? Are they that rigid about it? I have no idea. And if they're not, great kudos. You know, I'll cameo whenever I can, I can, or I'll play as much as I possibly can. Um, but in the end, uh, I just I don't want to take up a slot, if you will, or be some entity that you know you get on, you ask somebody to the server, and they get onto the server, and then the next thing you know, you never see them again. I just I don't want to be that guy. <laughs> I just don't want to be that guy. Um. So that that's that's probably the big, the big shtick and worry that I always have about things like that, and and, and yeah, it, it it feels a little odd to, to consider another server, considering the fact that I'm part of Ball Rocket, which you know we we have people that 
you know, people do have multiple different servers they play on. We've got, for example, a lot, uh, 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 quite a few people on Far Gaming also play on the iCraft server, which is again totally okay. It's that's 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 encouraged. We try to get people to interact with each other. It's just for me personally, you know, Bar Rocket isn't just a, a group I'm a part of. It's a group that I help found and help raise and grow. So it, it just always seems a little bit weird, <laughs> if you will, to uh, um, <clears throat> to consider something like that. So, uh, yeah, so I mean, it, it's just trying to, trying to figure out uh, what you want to do and how you want to run things is, is always a challenge. And in the end, I think uh, at the very least, if I can get a chance to... to Hop on uh, with the Grumpy Owls, either again as a uh, as a individual that's part of the group, or at the very least as somebody who can cameo uh, to say hi and help with projects or whatever. I would absolutely love to, but if, if, if there's any way I can actually commit, uh, uh, if there's any way I can actually commit the time that they're requesting to. Uh, to their server, then I I will do it in a heartbeat. Absolutely, you know. Again, for no other reason than just because I I like the people. They're good people. So, hopefully, hopefully I can make that happen. Who knows? Who knows? The shadow knows. Oof. If you know, if you know that reference, then good on you. Older than I am. <laughs> um. I know it's amazing. Thank you. And I had a little helper. Yay. Little archer helper. I like it. I love that I can actually hire uh, staff to help me out here. As an Amazon, you don't get extra helpers. So this is kind of a convenience. Oh, you want to talk to me too now? Yay. Let's talk to everybody. It is clear that we are facing an evil. Blah, 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 blah. Next thing. Good to know. I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not really paying attention to this anymore because I've done this so many times. I was just like, yeah, 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 blah, blah, blah. <laughs> All right, so... I just, I just, this is way better, right? Yeah, overall way better. Okay. Um. Yeah, so... Uh, ooh, fast attack speed. This is... Fast attack speed, okay. This is all the same exact stuff. It's just this has lightning on it, and it's one to four damage versus... One to five damage cold. I, I, I really like the cold slow down. <sighs> so, yeah, there's that and stuff and things. <laughs> Anyways, um, I tell you what, I, since I'm back in town here and getting things undone, I'm going to go ahead and just wrap it up. Um, and I, I don't know. I don't want to look at one. I'm not this one. Um, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here for right now. And, uh, We'll pick, we'll pick things back up uh, in the next episode. But, uh, again, uh, if you have an opinion on uh, Windows 10, uh, give me a two bits on it. And uh, uh, if you uh, have any thoughts and opinions on other topics we talked about here, give me a, go ahead and post down in the comments. I uh, really enjoy getting a chance to talk with you guys. Of course, again, if you want to uh, keep up on my sporadic content, since I don't have a little perfect release schedule here, I definitely encourage you to go ahead and hit the subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything, and heck, why not? It's right, right there. Right, just look right down, little red button right there. Just hit that button, and you're good to go. Um, and you can get, catch up on the content whenever I happen to post it. And of course, if you enjoyed this episode, go ahead and tell leave a like. Hey, another thing too, just a, a, a quick eye fly eye here, since I brought up the topic of uh, Ball Rocket. Um, love Ball Rocket. They're my family. Great group. We're a multi-platform gaming group. If you are interested in doing game content, doing collaboration, having a good time, etc., I highly encourage that you uh, head over to BallRocketGaming.com and check it out. It's a, again, a good group. We do a lot of different games. Uh, a, a good root game that we all do play is Minecraft. We have two servers now. We have our Cherry Bomb heavily modified uh, server. It is an 18 plus server, so disclaimer, nothing personal to anybody who's under 18. It's just it has to be done for a lot of reasons. I'm not going <laughs> to go into it. Um, but we also have the Sparkle server, which is a 
lightly modded or vanilla plus type uh, server. The intention is to give it a little kiss of love with, uh, with modding to enhance the personality of it a little bit and to give you a little taste of some, a couple of few mods to kind of get you comfortable with mods. Um, and that is an all ages server. So feel free to step on by and sign up on the Bar Rocket Gaming website just to hang out with us, talk, chat, and see what's going on there. And then you can also apply for the whitelist for those servers. Uh, we are a, a real whitelist server, not this fog mirror. Oh, you have a heartbeat? Yay, join us. <laughs> so um, you know, be prepared to, to sit down and have a chat with us and you know, quote-unquote interview. And uh, we'll go from there. So anyways, guys, as always, I appreciate it. Thank you so very much. Um, and uh, we'll pick up where we left off uh, next time. So for now, stay happy, stay healthy, and uh, ciao.